And I want you to understand, Lucky, that, that there's going to be no formality about this court. All I want you to do is to tell that jury, just exactly in your own words, what happened. Well, it happened just the way I said. Our posse surprised the lone wolf and his gang as they were holding up the Desert Express. Near the entrance to Paradise Gorge. And uh, then what happened, Lucky? When the bandits saw us coming, they jumped on their horses, headed through the pass towards town. And we followed them. There was a great deal of excitement and confusion at the moment, wasn't there? Yes, sir. Plenty. Now, Lucky, isn't it possible, just possible, that somebody else shot Buddy? Somebody else did shoot him, in the shoulder. But that was before Plunkett shot him. Do you know who it was that shot him in the shoulder? Yes, sir. It was the lone wolf. Well, please refrain from talking during the inquest. We all know that you and Buddy Cassidy were close friends. And I know how sincere you are in your testimony. But it's a very serious thing, Lucky, to accuse an officer of the law of cold-blooded murder. Now, you, you could be mistaken, couldn't you, Lucky? I could be, but I ain't. I know what I saw yesterday. Uh, do you... Uh, do you recall that, uh, that a couple of months ago you were just as positive that I had made a mistake in your account at the general store? Yes, sir. And uh, later you discovered that uh, you were wrong? I can't help believing that you are again wrong, Lucky, in accusing Deputy Sheriff Plunkett of this murder. Deputy Sheriff Plunkett has always been known as an honest, law-abiding citizen. I don't care what you say, Mr. Stoneham. Jim Plunkett shot Buddy Cassidy in the back, in cold blood. Gentlemen of the jury, you have all heard the testimony adduced in this court today. And I'm sure you feel, as I do, that Lucky Jenkins' testimony, honestly given, no doubt, was colored by his friendship for the deceased. It's inconceivable that an officer of the law would commit deliberate murder. Therefore, I feel constrained to instruct you to render a verdict of accidental death in the case of Buddy Cassidy. Lucky. Court? That's a court I'm a Chinese laundryman. They whitewashed Plunk. As far as I'm concerned, I'm tired of the way the law handles murders in this town. Are we gonna sit still and let this condition go on and on? Mary Cassidy's husband was shot in the back by Deputy Sheriff Jim Plunkett. And I saw him do it. My friends. My friends. Please. Do not, do not be guided by the outbursts of an angry boy. Angry because his friend has been accidentally killed. But this you must know. A coroner's jury, duly appointed, came to the conclusion that Buddy Cassidy's death was accidental. I beg of you, my friends, leave to me and to the duly appointed officers of this community the task of bringing law and order into this town. The decision rests in your hands. Come in. 
Tell me, Lucky, did they convict him? No, Mary. They wouldn't believe me. The coroner told the jury to bring in a verdict of accidental death. Accidental death? Oh, how could they? <laughs> Mary, Mary, please don't cry like this. He killed me. <laughs> oh, darling, Buddy wouldn't want you to carry on like this. Please stop crying. Hoppy were only here, he'd see that Plunkett was punished. <laughs> He's going to be here. I'm starting for Verdi County right now. Tell Hoppy what's happened. didn't have to yank me off my horse, did you? <laughs> All right, get on your horse. Woofer, now it's my turn. Oh, Hoppy, I was only fooling. Only fooling, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait. Oh, hold get on. on. Right what are you here. doing here? Hoppy. That's lucky. Hello, you young jackrabbit. You're a long ways from your home range, aren't you? Well, you long-legged stray. What are you doing as far away from your mammy? And all alone, too. <laughs> Shall I warm up his milk, Hoppy? <laughs> <laughs> hey, what's the matter with you? That ride get you down? I've got bad news for you, Hoppy. Well, what is it? About your brother. You mean Buddy? Is he in trouble? It's worse than that, he's... I understand. What happened? Started with a holdup three days ago. The lone wolf and his gang held up the Desert Express. Buddy and me, and was with the sheriff's posse. And that's the way it happened, Hoppy. As far as I'm concerned, the law killed Buddy. What you gonna do about it, Hoppy? What do you think? And uh, by crickety, I'm with you. I ain't hankering to get you into trouble, Wendy. Well, trouble don't mean nothing to me. All right, you figure it out when I get my rigging. Trouble. <laughs> Why, I was hatched in trouble. Born on an open range in a howling blizzard. Cut my teeth on a gun barrel. Fed on cactus soup till I was six. <laughs> he talks about hurting me into trouble. <laughs> Why, you old duffy, your legs are beginning to buckle. he would got all your buttons. Say, but Hoppy and I might be needing one of those valleys they talk about. Valley? Well, that's all right. I'll be one of them things, as long as it means being with Hoppy. I've got it, Wendy. The piano player at the Sagebrush Bar and Dance Hall died a couple of days ago. And Ace Crowder, who runs the joint, might be needing a new professor. What did you die of? I'm not sure. I think it was a gunshot wound in the back. He played Britannia rules away when a guy by the name of O'Hara asked for a word of the green. O'Hara? Is he still there? I'm not sure. 
I think he is. Well, I ain't tickling the ivories and no honky-tonk for nobody. Well, if that's the case, Wendy, I guess Hoppy and me will have to leave you behind. Well, hey, wait a minute. If it means helping you and Hoppy any, I'll take the job. Yes, and I'll bring some real culture to Cottonwood Gulch. By the way, the river, Hoppy, it's seven miles to Cottonwood Gulch. But if you follow this trail, it's only two. Well, you two take the shortcut, and I'll go by the way of the river. And remember, when I get to town, don't pay any attention to anything I say or anything I do. We'll treat you like a poor relation. She stops. Nobody knows. Why don't you try 17, mister? Number five, red. Well, it wasn't far off, was it? A glass of buttermilk, Harry. Take a little shat really. Hello, Ace. Hello, Lucky. Been away? Yeah. Brought you a new professor. Wendy Holliday, known far and wide as a cowboy troubadour. Wendy, this is Ace Crowder. He runs the place. Hey. <laughs> professor, eh? <laughs> Looks more like something that just crawled out of the bunghole of a beer cake. <laughs> Can you play the piano? <laughs> Can I play the piano? Way up in Deadwood City, the cowboy used to call me the Fender Hoofsky of the West. <laughs> yeah, around cowboys, he's known as a musician. But around musicians, he's known as a cowboy. Well, right now, you're around cowboys. So play something. Well, I'm a little mite out of practice, but you just think of your favorite classic, and I'll whip her up for you. Well, I can't think of no classic right off, but maybe Bull O'Hara can. Hey, Bull, what's that favorite piece of yours? The wearing of the green. Yeah. Wearing the green. You better play it, Professor. And it better be good. I'm darn if I can remember that tune. Well, that's too bad. What's your favorite flower? I got an idea. Mr. O'Hara, it's going to be a pleasure to play the piano for a man that understands fine music. Would you mind telling me how long it's been since you've heard the word of the greed? Oh, too long, me lad. Play it. Would you prefer it the way they play it in the north of Ireland or the south of Ireland? Well, you hairy face palpine, there's only one way to play the wearing of the green. It goes like this. Oh, sure, it's a fine Irishman, yeah. I couldn't whistle it better myself. I don't want you to whistle it, lad. I want you to play it. Oh. Hey, Al, Al, me lad. Wake up. I'll meet the new professor. Sure. Come on, lad, get your fiddle. We'll have the one under the green. <laughs> Careful, Professor. Don't let it throw you. Here we go, Professor. There's a shining little island, and its people love it well. A smart by nature, gifted with the most enduring spell. Like an emerald set in sapphire with a diamond here and there. It gleams across the water with a charm. 
on me on compare. You will know it by the mountains, by the valleys and the fells, by the lakes of sweet Killarney where the blue of heaven dwells. There's a shining little island and its people love it well. A spot by nature gifted with the most enduring spell, like an emerald set in sapphire with a diamond here and there. It gleams across the water with a charm beyond compare. You will know it by the mountains, by the valleys and the fells, by the lakes of sweet Killarney where the blue of heaven dwells. You will know it by the shamrock dearest emblem ever seen, and though it's Patrick O'Hara. There we are. There is the bar, boys. Give everybody what they want, Harry. Uh, what you be after having, Annie? Sure, and if it's all the same to you, Mr. O'Hara, I think I'll be after having a weed rattle in And, uh, Professor, what'll you be having? Bottle shake, really. <laughs> will not do you so bit of hand, Professor. Don't get excited, boys. That's just my calling card. Another crazy cowboy. Yeah. He looks harmless. Hello, stranger. Got a hunch and better bunch. No, I never gamble for chicken feed. We'll buy you a drink. You got a customer. Not bad on the piano. He'll do. At least he knows the black keys from the white. And they get the job? <laughs> sure. You're a stranger in these parts, ain't you? Practically. Aiming to camp here? For a while, yeah. What's your name? Well, uh... My enemies call me Wild Bill Dynamite McGrew. But you can call me Bill. Dynamite McGrew, hmm? Huh? I don't think I ever heard of you. No? Well, you better keep your ears open. Maybe you will. Don't seem to be much excitement around here right now. Maybe I'll start some. Well, we did have a little the other day when some bandits tried to hold up the train. <laughs> I heard about that. Just a bunch of amateurs. Well, you can't rule them off for trying. <laughs> Why, I could have done better standing on my head. Why, it takes nerve and brains to hold up a train. From what I've heard, they didn't have either. And if you're asking me what you ain't, I think this lone wolf guy that everybody's talking about is a stuffed rabbit. Get over to your music box. Dynamite McGrew. Why don't you try holding up a train sometime? Hey, you throw off an idea at that. Maybe I will.
Morning, Carter. Morning. Did you hear the news? You mean about a lone bandit holding up the express last night? Yeah. Sure, I heard about it, and I think I know who it was. If he comes around here tonight, I'll see that you're introduced to him. His name is McGrew. Keep your eyes on him. Mr. Wilson sent it over. Hank, Hank. Number eight on the black. That's me again. McGrew, you must have been born with a silver horseshoe in your mouth. Why, Annie, you ain't insinuating I got a big mouth, are you? Big a little good looking. It's a nice mouth. Take it easy, Professor, and grind out a waltz. And it better be Irish. Sandy. There's a little tip for you. Gold? That's a lot of money for a dance, isn't it? Well, that song thrown in, that's mere chicken feed. Say, you're not by any chance the hombre that held up that train all alone, are you? What do you think? I think you know your stuff, my girl. It's good enough for me. Hey, waiter. Bubbly water for the lady. Waiter, never mind filling that order. Go back and tell her I want to see her. Yes, sir. The boss wants to see you. Thanks. Be right back, my girl.
I don't know him very well. But he's alone now if you want to meet him. Hi, McGrew. Hi, son. Excuse me for horning in like this, but this is Deputy Sheriff Jim Plunkett. He wants to meet you. Official or social? Oh, just social. Being deputy sheriff, why I like to get acquainted with all the strangers in the gulch. Well, being deputy sheriff, that's what you should do. But I ain't hankering to meet nobody. what you think. I think he's the guy that held up the express last night. Tell him I want to see him. And after that, you keep away from him. You keep your filthy hands off me. I only work here and you've got nothing to say about who I associate with. Crowder wants to see you, Bill. Better watch your step. Thanks. I always do. Sit down. No, thanks. Suit yourself. Dynamite, if that's your name, you pulled a pretty slick deal last night. Where's the swag? That's kind of a personal question, ain't it? Me and my people are working this section of the country. And when a stranger works here, he splits with us. Or else? Some strangers. Not me. I work alone and I split with nobody. You're bucking a tough game, stranger. The tougher it gets, the better I like it. Get me? Yeah. But I want you to get me. If it's your intention to get active in this section, you gotta work with us. Savvy? Hey, are you the big chief around here? Or are you talking for somebody else? I'm the big chief's right-hand man. Oh. Right-hand man, huh? That's fine. You get this, Crowder. I don't do business with anybody's right-hand man. You're not leaving, are you, Bill? Yeah, but I've got a good reason for coming back later. Follow McGrew. See if you can find out where he stashed that loot.
Who's there? It's Hoppy, Mary. Open the door, quick. Close that. Oh, Hoppy. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, now. Pull yourself together, honey. We haven't got long to talk. Somebody followed me here. Followed you? Who? I don't know. I'm going to find out. It's Plunkett. Are you sure? Positive. You better let me handle this, honey. I don't know what he's up to, but I'm going to find out. Now you stay here and keep your door locked. Who is it? Never mind, open up. Open this door or I'll kick it down. If you do, it's the last one you'll kick down. Open the door, Mary, it's Hoppy. I gotta get out of here, Mary. Your boys will be here in a minute to see what the shooting was all about. Now, don't worry, I'll see you don't get into trouble. thing happened tonight. I just heard that Deputy Sheriff Jim Plunkett was killed up at the Bar Q Ranch. What's funny about that? Mrs. Cassidy says she killed him, but she didn't. Who do you think did? Who do you think? Feel me in the next hand, Annie. So, 
say, I guess that's a railroad president's private car. Yeah. Maybe he'd catch train robbers. You know, son, I can drive one of them there iron horses just as easy as I can ride a four-legged critter. Fact is, I was the throttle of the first engine ever pulled in Deadwood City. Well, I'll tell the railroad president about you. Maybe he needs someone who knows all about engines. There ain't another a bolt on an engine I don't know by his first name. Marley, Mr. Stolen. Sure glad to see you all. Well, glad to see you. How's Mr. Wooden? Fine, sir. He waiting for you now. Was your train ever held up by bandits? Yeah. Why I went so fast, they'd say, here he comes. There he goes. You did? Gee. You darn stupid. Well, Henry, how are you? It's nice to see you. Thank you, Mr. Wooden. And how are you? Well, I feel much better since reading your report. Pull up a chair. Thank you. Well, it certainly makes me feel good to know we have such a capable man in charge of our business in this section. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mr. Wooden. But I came down here to talk to you about these holdups. I'm glad you did. The townspeople are thoroughly aroused, and I fear serious trouble. Something must be done to run down these hoodlums. You know, nothing is safe in this section now. Why well, I feel any moment that the lone wolf and his gang may swoop down on my back. Say, Henry. Did you ever hear of a fellow around here by the name of Hopalong Cassidy? Yes. Yes, I have. I believe he's the brother of Buddy Cassidy, the boy who was killed in the holdup the other day. Well, if you can locate him, he's been recommended to me as the one man in the West who can run down these bandits. Well, he's not known around these parts. That is, to my knowledge. But I'll see what I can do. I wish you would. I'm sure McGrew is the man who killed Plunkett. I don't care if he did. He's the man we need. Have him meet me at the hideout. Why not talk to him here? He's in the other room now, talking to Annie. I want to meet him on my own ground. Now, we haven't got much time, so you better get busy. Keep him at the hideout until I get there. Here's one I bet you can't repeat. What? Uh, George crossing in Washington, Delaware, second day after the Declaration of Indignation. George Washington. <laughs> McGrew, there's something I want to tell you. Yeah? Alone. All right, then. The lone wolf wants to see you. Yeah? When? Right away. Where? At his hideout, about five miles from here. How about it? It's all right with me. It's all right, Pete. Just me and a friend. Chief here yet? I ain't seen him. Friend of mine. Keep your eye on him, Pete. If he makes one false move, drill him. The chief will be here in a few minutes for a private talk with him. Hey, Jerry, bring out some cold meat and heat up some coffee. Sit down.
Help yourself. No, thanks. Don't look so good to me. <laughs> afraid somebody might try to poison you? Not afraid. But there are a lot of people that would like to. Is Crowder here yet? Yeah, he's inside. It's the lone wolf. Chief, this is Dynamite McGrew. Howdy. Now, there's no use making a rehash of what happened between you and Crowder. So we'll just take a shortcut to the proposition I want to make. I don't like a lot of palavering any more than you do. Good. I want a man to handle a big job for me tomorrow. And as far as I can figure out, you're the man. What's the job? The biggest shipment of gold ever carried on the Western Railroad is going to be on the flyer tomorrow night. The job is to get that gold. Well, what's preventing you? The right leader. What's the matter with you? Why don't you lead them? Does a good general lead his own troops into battle? Not always. And I never heard of one hiding behind a couple of pieces of magnifying glass before. Your wit would get you into trouble, McGrew, if I didn't need you. Let's forget that. The point is, will you handle this job for me? For you? Oh, I see. You like all the chips in your own stack, huh? Now we'll make, uh, make two stacks out of them. And the even. <laughs> you're, um, you're very exacting. Yeah, and I have to run things my own way, too. Run them any way you want to, so long as you do a good job. How many men do you want? I'll need ten of the best bad men in the West. I got them. How many men you got here? Six. Where are the others? Down to the gulch. You better give me their names and I'll look them up later. Ace, uh, you can write them out for him when you get back to town. You want to see the men who are here? No, just tell them to stand by until I send for them tomorrow. Anything else on your mind? No. That's all for now. You riding back to town with me? No, there are a few things I want to talk over with him. You can ride back alone, can't you? Oh, I think I can find my way back all right. McGrew, there's plenty of money on that train for both of us. Don't fail. Don't worry. I never fail. That's better. Every time I wear those glasses, I get a headache for a week. They sure change your looks. Well, what do you what do you think of him, Crowder? All I know is he's tough. <laughs> Pete, just where would you have plugged me if I'd have made a false move in there? Where would have done the most good? You better save that lead. You might need it tomorrow. See you later. Down. Don't get upset, Mr. Wooden, but I wanted to have a little private talk with you, and your boy here couldn't see it my way. Who are you? We'll get around to that in a minute. Just ask him to step outside. Mr. Wooden? I'm the man that held up your train last night. What? I don't get excited. I had a good reason. 
A good reason for robbing a train? Sure. I had to make the bad men in this part of the country think I'm better than they are. I think I see. I brought back your gold, too. Every ounce of it. Well, this is most extraordinary. I've never heard of anything like it. <laughs> well, I guess it is a bit unusual. Say, who are you, anyway? My name's Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy? That's what they call me. But the very man we've been trying to find. Well, this is a pleasure. Thanks. But that ain't what I wanted to talk to you about. I've got a personal reason for wanting to clean up this town. But I need some outside support. And you'll get it. I'll issue instructions to Henry Stoneham immediately. You'll get all the help you need. Henry Stoneham? Who is he? Well, he's our local representative. He also runs the bank and the general store and... Oh, he's mixed up in a dozen things. Can I trust him? Implicitly. That's fine. I'll go call on him. And if I can be of any personal assistance while I'm here, don't hesitate to call on me. Thank you. In the meantime, you'd better call for your porter. He might be headed out of town by now. <laughs> Hello, Lucky. Hello, Hoppy. We've been expecting you. I had a pretty busy night. I couldn't get out. I had to talk to the railroad president and had a session with the lone wolf. The lone wolf? Didn't you get him? No, his men had me covered like a blanket. But don't worry, I'll get him. What's he look like? I couldn't tell. He kept his face covered. And I could tell him the way he handled them poker chips, he's a professional gambler. And he wears a ring I'll never forget. Well, that's more than most people know about him. Say, uh... You know that cabin up at the Lucky Load Mine? Yeah. Well, there are going to be eight or ten of the Lone Wolf gang there tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock. Waiting for us, huh? Yeah. I want you to round them up and take them into the Sagebrush Bar. You'll meet us there? Yeah, in the meantime, Wendy and me will have Crowder and his gang rounded up. Say, what are you planning on doing with them? We're going to give them a dose of the speediest justice they ever had in Cottonwood Gulch. How do you do, Miss Annie? Hello, Skipper. Mr. Stoneham? Yes? What can I do for you? The president of the railroad asked me to come and see you. Yes? About rounding up them bandits that held up the train the other night. Well, why did he send you to me? Well, you said you'd be willing to help. Well, I certainly am. Uh, won't you sit down? Thanks. Now, what are your plans? Some of my friends are rounding up part of the Lone Wolf's gang at his hideout this afternoon. I need about 15 more men here in town to help me round up the rest of them. So? With their help, I hope to have them all headed for the county jail by sundown. Now, what about the lone wolf? I'll get a line on him through Crowder. If I have to choke it out of him. He's the one man I'm after now that Plunkett's out of the way. What do you mean? He's the one that gave Plunkett orders to kill my brother. You mean Buddy Cassidy? Yeah. Do you infer that you're Hopalong Cassidy? That's what they call me. Well, I... I'm... I'm mighty glad to know you, Mr. Cassidy, and I'm... Well, I'm certainly glad to have you lined up with us in our attempt to clean up Cottonwood Gulch. Thanks. But cleaning up this mess is only a means to an end. The thing I'm interested in is to get my hands on the lone wolf. 
well folks around here are going to be going to be kind of surprised aren't they when they find out that that you're not as tough as they as they thought you were just what I thought so you're the lone wolf huh Be quiet. All right, get his guns. All right, get some rope. Hurry up. I just saw dynamite going in Stoneham's office a little while ago. What do you make of that? Dynamite and Stoneham together? Yeah. Aw, oh, don't you worry your head about Stoneham. <laughs> he can take care of himself. Catch me worrying about a bank. You go down to the Sagebrush Bar and find Crowder. Tell him I'm in trouble up at the hideout and that I need him at once. Now, when he gets started, you come back here and untie this fellow. Bring him to me at the freight shed. If he makes any trouble, you know what to do. Now, get going. I'm gonna use you as a shield, Cassidy. In case any of your boys get rough with me down at the depot. Then you and I are gonna board the train together. And you're gonna ride with me as far as Paradise Gorge. Now, at that point, I'm going to toss you into the Black Snake River. And let me give you a little bit of advice. When Sam comes back, don't try any trouble. That fellow's one of the best shots in the West, and he wouldn't think any more of pulling a trigger than he would of tossing away the butt of a cigarette. I'll be back in about an hour. I'm going down to the store to get something. We're pulling out tonight. Tonight? Yes, sir, Mr. Wooden. I'll be right here waiting for you. Wide awake and ready to go. You have to hurry, Mr. Crowder, as fast as you can. Listen, I ain't taking no chances. You come with me. And if there's anything funny about this, you won't come back. Cassidy said to close in on the lone wolf's cabin at about three. We got about ten minutes. Let's go. Now you double cross and pole cat. Will you talk? Stone him. Stone him. Stone him's what? Stone him's pulling out. Where's he going? To take a train across the state line. Why, right. Come on, boys. Hurry up. Get your horses. What's the matter? What happened? It's Crowder and his gang. Where'd they go? Where are they? They all headed for town. Say, hey, something's going wrong with Cassidy's plans. We'd better go after him.
Oh, I see. You're the long wolf, huh? You're very smart. I always had a sneaking suspicion you were something besides a banker. Cut out the gab. Crowder will be here any minute. When he comes, tell him I wish him luck. And you keep your trap shut until I get out of here. Come on. I got a new job for you, engineer on a railroad. I don't want to run no engine, mister. I'm beginning to like this piano. You're gonna learn to like an engine. You'll kill me if I stop playing. And I'll kill you if you don't. Better do as he says, Wendy. He's the long wolf. Right on, open it up. When you see how he's ransacked your office, you'll know he's been here. Where did he go? He's gone bye-bye. On the choo-choo. Anything of Crowder and his gang? They're chasing the train, trying to head off the lone wolf. Well, that must be where Cassidy is. Come on, boys, let's go. So what's going on around here? Stolen stole the train. Well, who's running it? Dad saw the fences at the throttle, and Stolen said he's back with a gun. Then Annie, help me out of this. Dynamite, you're shot. Never mind that. Have you seen Stoneham or Crowder? Stoneham, he's got away on the train, and Crowder and the gang's after him. How long have they been gone? Not more than three or four minutes. What are you going to do? I'm going to get Stoneham. Shoulder fixed. Have a good time. Here comes Hoppy. They got away, Hoppy. 
You take a shortcut and stop at the bridge, or I direct that train. Well, wait a minute. I want to tell you about Wendy. No He's time now. Come on. Not me, Hoppy. It was Wendy. What do you mean, Wendy? He was on that engine. That's what I tried to tell you back to the station. On the engine? Well, don't take it too hard, Hoppy. Wendy wouldn't have had it any other way. He always said he wanted to die with his boots on. 
Harpy! Harpy! Wendy! Oh. <laughs> what do you mean I'm dead? I'm the livest, rootinest, tootinest corpse you ever see. <laughs> well, come on, get me out of here. I got a thorn in me forever, state the union. Bye, honey. Goodbye. Funny. All my life, men like Cassidy have been saying goodbye to me. 